Hi, I'm John Darren with the Kohi Valley Sword Group. Um, first off, let me apologize, we didn't get any videos out last week. Uh, I was rushing to finish the bed project, uh, ended up putting a chisel through the, uh, my left hand. <laughs> um, but I'm on the mend now, and we can get back to giving you some content. Today's video is going to be a look at the Rondell trainer from Cold Steel that we're going to be using for our uh, German dagger work. As you see, I've already begun to sort of customize it a little bit with some uh, real lovely fluorescent orange nail polish. Um, we've decided that with the dagger work, what we're going to do is rather than working from a single specific source, we are compiling all of the German sources that mention dagger work are uh, wrestling work that's directly connected with dagger work. Uh, and we're going through, we're cataloging them all um, and sort of uh, organizing them a little bit better than the original texts. That way we can give kind of a nice, clean, systematic approach to looking at the German dagger. Um, so, uh, we went with the Cold Steel Rondells because they are, uh, they're great. <laughs> they're they are really great little tools. Um, and as they come, you need to do very little to them, unlike most cold steel products, uh, in order for them to be useful. Uh, there are uh, just a couple little things, uh, and that is uh, on the handle side, right? As we slope in these sharp little, uh, detail corners are uh, not bad. However, on the blade side and on the pommel side, the side most likely to strike your opponent with, uh, it comes from a 90 degree angle, and so those corners are, are quite sharp. So what we're going to do uh, in this video is just real quickly show you how you can uh, fix that if you're not really tool handy at all. Um, so the first way I'm going to show is if you have a knife, this could be a razor blade, uh, uh, I'm going to be using a kiridashi, a Japanese wood carving knife. Uh, you could use an X-Acto knife, a box knife, anything like that. So what I'm going to do, take my knife at a 45 degree angle, holding it with my thumb at the top, edges that way. I'm going to use the back of my other thumb as a leverage point for control. I'm going to bring it 45 degrees and just slip, slip, slip. Yeah. All right. I don't know if this is going to pick that up at all. I just take the corner off. I, uh, remember, knives, just like swords, cut by cutting, not by pushing very well. So save yourself some effort and just slide that corner right off. And you can see that this would be pretty quick. Up, 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 right across. Let's say you don't have a sharp knife or are uncomfortable or you know, maybe you're a, a youngin, right? But you have access to files. Uh, so Magic Cut. Um, these are kind of expensive. Uh, you could use a normal double cut mill bastard, or a uh, just a normal double cut, or even a uh, needle file, jeweler's file, point file, whatever your country calls them. Uh, I'm going to use the Magic Cut just because it's a little bit more aggressive while still living a nice finish. So, index your finger along the shaft, place the uh, tang against the triangle bone of the palm. Uh, remember that double cut files cut along their axis. So that's, you know, moving it this way is not going to cut hardly any. Moving it this way is how they designed to cut. So, I use my left thumb as a fence. Uh, try not to put a lot of lateral pressure, it'll uh, pile through your thumb. And just a few quick strokes, right? Now you're going to have this little bit of fur, <laughs> sort of plastic fur left over. You can come in across and clean it up just as so. And you can see, it was real fast. Um, I'm not going to do the whole thing right now. Go around, take off the little corners. Now, you don't necessarily need to, uh, as you can see, the little accents stand proud of, I guess, the lighter section of the base. Maybe that's it. You can see easier. There you go. 
Um, you not need to remove it down this way. Uh, that's that's plenty soft. If you ever are curious, like, huh, is this gonna hurt my partner? You take that part and you rub it against your cheek, right? If it hurts you, yeah, as uncomfortable as irritating, then you're gonna fix it, right? But uh, handle section and blade section, right? Is really go to town um, because while we are certainly here to uh, you know work, uh, there's no need to pointlessly injure your partner. Uh, that being said, uh, what you can do to sort of customize them and, and make them your own is is pretty infinite. Uh, this polypropylene uh, plastic, uh, you can shape it down. Uh, down to sort of any size that you want. I find that this size is pretty good for the uh, actual rondelles, uh, which is, if you don't know where the daggers get their name, is these round sections are called rondelles. Um, nothing needs to be done to the later tip. You can come in with nail polish, uh, like I did here, uh, but with very minimal use, you can see already that some of it is starting to flake out. And, you know, maybe I could do something to make sure it sticks, but I really don't that much. <laughs> um, so yeah, we uh, already have all of the German sources transcribed into a single document and relatively organized. We're just going through right now and breaking down how individual pieces of the work uh, repeat in set circumstances, in other words. So uh, you might have work where you're engaging with your, your left hand and sort of wrenching their shoulder and elbow and wrist. Um, but you might come to that work not from originally coming from here, but coming from cross block or from hooking and transitioning over, sort of on and on. Uh, we, at this point, are just focused on what actually appears in the treaties. Um, we're not uh, so far building out to this sort of... Uh, uh, common sense of other work that could be done from there, uh, just to keep it a little bit more uh, within the ethnic flavor of the German work. Uh, anyway, that's it for the update and it for the discussion on the rondelle. Uh, these are excellent, excellent tools. Um, if you're looking for a, a Tonto trainer, you know, one of these where you just uh, grind the guard all the way back uh, would make a suitable uh, sort of Uroi Doshi um, armor piercing Tonto uh, knockoff. Um, yeah, and they're cheap. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Anyway, uh, as always, if you want to understand this work, you have to pick up a sword and go train. <laughs>